In this video, I will present a theorem that is sometimes called the necessary condition test and sometimes called the divergence theorem that provides a quick and simple calculation I can perform when I am trying to figure out whether a series is convergent or not. This theorem has something to do with the relation between sequences and series. As a reminder, the definition of a series is via a sequence, a sequence of partial sums. The value of a series, or an infinite sum, is defined as the limit of partial sums, which are finite sums. So I can write that the sum of a n, when n goes from 0 to infinity, is the limit as k goes to infinity of s k, where s k is the sum of the same terms, but stopping at the index k. Therefore, we can say that the series is convergent, if and only if the sequence of partial sums is convergent. This is the series of the a's and the sequence of the s's. But the question is, what is the relation between the series of the a's and the sequence of the a's? Is there a relation between these two things being convergent? Let's think about it. If the series is convergent, if the sum of all the a's of infinitely many terms is going to be a finite number, I expect that those terms, the a's, have to be very small, close to zero, because otherwise I don't see how adding infinitely many of them could add up to a finite number. So I expect that this series is convergent, the sequence of the a's, not of the s's, must be also convergent and to zero. And in fact, that is exactly what the theorem says. The theorem says that if I have a series that is convergent, then the limit of the general term must be zero. I'll prove this in a moment, but first, how do we use this theorem in practice? Normally, I try to use this theorem to conclude a series is convergent or not, not when I already know a series is convergent. So what happens if I have a series and I test the conclusion? I check and I see that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is zero. Well, if I ever encounter this situation, I can conclude nothing. The series may be convergent or divergent. However, a more useful scenario is when I take a new series and I test this and I see that the limit of the general term of a n is not zero, either because it is a different number or because the limit doesn't exist. In that case, I can conclude that now the if part will also be false and the series must be divergent. This could be the contrapositive of the theorem. Here are some concrete examples. Let's say I look at the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of arctangent of n over 1 plus e to the minus n, and I want to know whether it is convergent. Well, I'm going to try to use this theorem. I compute the limits as n goes to infinity of the general term. Now, the limit of the numerator is pi over 2, the limit of the denominator is 1 plus 0, so overall I get pi over 2. Pi over 2 is not 0, so the series is divergent. Done. I don't have to do anything else, I don't have to look at the definition, I know the series is divergent, it doesn't represent a number. I can move on. By contrast, let's say I'm looking at these two series, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, or 1 over n squared. If I try the same thing, I'm going to see that the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n is 0, and the same thing is true for 1 over n squared. And therefore, from this theorem, I cannot draw any conclusion. Yet, emphasis on yet. This theorem doesn't tell me what's happening, but of course each one of them will either be convergent or divergent. As a spoiler, one of them will happen to be convergent and the other one will happen to be divergent, except that I don't have the tools to prove that yet. I will be able to prove that in a few more videos. But for now, with just this theorem, I have to say I don't know yet. Okay, well, let's prove the theorem. It's actually a short proof. I take a series, the sum of the ans from n equals 0 to infinity, I assume it's convergent, and I want to prove that the limit of the general term is 0. Saying that the series is convergent is the same thing as saying that the limit of the partial sums exists. I'm going to call the case partial sum sk and the limit of them s. So I remind you sk is the sum of the ans stopping when the index reaches the value k. I can also write the a's in terms of the s's instead of the s's in terms of the a's. And I can say that a n is s n minus s n minus 1, because s n is the sum up to a n, s n minus 1 is the sum up to a n minus 1, and therefore the difference is simply a n. And once I have written it this way, I can use the limit loss. And the limit loss will tell me that the limit as n goes to infinity of a n is the limit as n goes to infinity of s n minus the limit as n goes to infinity of s n minus 1. But to be able to do this, I need to know that those two limits existed. So to be able to use the limit law here, I need to start by assuming that the series is convergent. 
In other words, the limit of the sequence of partial sums exists. And those two limits now exist, and they happen to be equal. And therefore, S minus S is equal to zero, and that completes the proof. That's it. So once again, this is the summary. This is how we use this theorem in practice. And the thing to remember is that this is a quick thing that is easy to check when I first look at a series. Sometimes it won't give me any information, and it will never allow me to conclude that the series is convergent. But sometimes it will allow me to quickly conclude the series is divergent. And in that case, I don't have to do anything else and I can move on.